Hi guys, it's me again. I'm going completely insane from sitting inside this hot truck trying to record this clip, but it's not working. Hopefully it works this time. It's been almost four hours that I've been trying to record this last, uh, or this whole video, this last clip over an hour because my screen capture stuff just does, does not work. It doesn't want to work and it keeps failing. Like I'll record the whole thing and then it fails. So hopefully we don't go crazy trying to do this. So we got a few things to talk about today. I just went and picked up some tires. So these are some like circle track slicks. They're like stock car special Goodyear Eagle slicks. I don't know how these are gonna work. Probably better than my little skinny Ford Ranger tire. So we're gonna try that. They're like 40 bucks a piece or whatever. Got them pretty cheap. So we'll see if they work or not. And I also went to go pick those up in the Exploder. So. Just got done with uh, almost a four hour trip in the Explorer and everything seemed like it was okay as long as I was just driving. So transmission in that truck's not completely fixed yet but I got a couple other things I wanna try. So the purpose of today's video is uh, I got a question yesterday about how I'm gonna set up my scan to still use the AFR error percentage histogram. So before when I was scanning, uh, for some of the like driving tuning, I was using the AFR error histogram, which is basically an error percentage between your commanded and your actual air fuel ratio. So now that the flex fuel is gonna be on, the, the commanded is actually gonna be quite a bit different, especially wide open and in, in power enrichment and stuff. So it's gonna be changing quite a bit. So the AFR error percentage calculation is not gonna be accurate because the stoic is actually quite a bit different. The, the stoic for gasoline is 14.7 and stoic for E85 is gonna be like 9.8 or something like that. So it's gonna be completely different. So I wanna try something. One, I wanna show how to set it up in the scan or what I did yesterday and what I'm gonna to try to do to get the percentage a little bit closer and I'll explain that a little bit more. And I'm gonna show it because I didn't save it yesterday and shut the computer off and I gotta redo it. So I'm gonna make a video on it. Okay, so the reason we wanna do this, and I just did this scan right here, and you can see it's commanding an 11.5 air fuel ratio, uh, partially because it's, it's warming up too. It's not fully up to temp, it's at 86 right now. But because of the alcohol percentage, even when this is warmed up, the commanded air fuel ratio is going to be really low because the stoic is different because there's ethanol in it. So I want to show you this as an example, 12.8 right now for gas stoic, which is 14.7, 12.8 should actually be pretty rich at this point. But if I look at my AFR error histogram here, this cell right here, 21, is showing extremely lean. So that's basically where this was running at right here at this point. It's showing that it's 21% lean because it's it's getting this percentage from this commanded number and the actual wideband reading. So 12.6 should be about 20% lean compared to this 11.6 commanded air fuel ratio. So that's not accurate anymore because of the alcohol percentage. All right, so now that we have the why, I'm gonna show you the what. So. First thing I want to do is make sure that this equivalence ratio commanded is in the channels list. So that has got to be in there. You already have the wideband set up, so that should be okay. Add the equivalence ratio commanded. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, right click, and I'm going to duplicate my wideband. So I'm going to take my wideband and I'm going to clone the series so I have a second wideband. Me personally, I, was, I still want to read my actual wideband in gas AFR, so 14.7. That's still what I want to see on my wideband. So I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to have one in gas AFR and one in uh, ethanol. So this orange one is going to stay as my gas. So the other wideband, the blue one, I'm going to change this 14.7 stoic for gas to lambda and then I'm going to change the min max 0.5 and 1.5 because lambda is going to be 1 and it's going to vary from 1 plus or minus 1 so I'm going to change that and then I'm going to take this AFR commanded 
we're going to change the sensor. So this is not going to be commanded air fuel ratio anymore. This is going to be commanded equivalence ratio. Okay, so commanded, and we're going to look for commanded equivalence ratio. It's under engine fuel commanded desired, equivalence ratio commanded. We're going to throw that in there. And we're also going to make sure that this is 0.5 and 1 because this is going to be plus or minus 1 from Stoic. So that's how you set up that portion of it. So next I'll show you how to hit, set up the, the histogram. Okay, so after some time, I might have found the best way to explain this. <clears throat> so right now, we have a 2% here. This is 2% rich on the AFR error histogram, but we're 10% rich on the EQ ratio. So what I want to do is develop this formula that I can divide it by 5 to be equivalent to what the AFR error histogram would be. But the reason that this thing is not working, to go over it again, this is 2% rich. If I look at this table, <clears throat> it's at a 13 air fuel ratio. And it's only showing 2% rich because with this commanded stoic at a 21% alcohol ratio, my actual stoichiometric AFR is around 13.3. So it's right in between these two cells here, 13.5 and 13.1. So I'm at about a 13.3 is what it's actually commanding at a one lambda, which is stoic with 21%. So follow me on that. So it should be reading 13.3 approximately to be stoic but it's actually reading a 13. So 2% of 13.3 is about uh, a 2.6-ish percent. So, or 2.26 air fuel ratio. So 13.3 minus 2.26, we're gonna round a little bit. That's where you're getting this number here. So 2% of the AFR richer than 13.3, which is stoic, is showing up as the 13. So what I want to do to make this make more sense, I want this chart here to make sense like this one does. So I'm going to take this chart here and take this formula, divide it by 5, so it's equivalent to what it's going to be on the AFR error histogram because the AFR error histogram is only going to be good for commanded air fuel ratio for gasoline versus wideband for gasoline which is what the wideband is going to convert it to from lambda so EQ ratio error is going to be basically the lambda number which is going to be showing you only stoic for any fuel that you run which is going to be changing with a flex fuel system so this table if it divide it by five should be equivalent and should be able to use it the same way so again if i were to take this 10 percent at 850 and i go into my air primary ve table and i go to 800 and i go to 50 and I change this thing by 10%, if I add 10% to this thing, or I take 10% away, so it's 10% rich, right? So I'm a, I would be taking 10% away. So if I were to just pay special, multiply by percent, and it takes that 10% off of this table, I'm going to be cutting this table, I'm going to be pulling 25% fuel out of this thing. And that is clearly not going to work. All right, so I'm going to go through this kind of fast because my screen capture keeps failing and I think it might be related to the file size. So we're going to go into the graphs. We're going to duplicate the VE error, AFR error histogram. Uh, actually, we're going to duplicate the EQ error histogram that we created before. So we're going to go in graphs layout. We're going to 
highlight that one, clone the graph. We're going to click up on up to, um, just because I want to, I'm going to put it next to the other one, and then I'm going to call this EQ error divided. So we can close that because that's duplicated. Now I'm going to go into tools, math parameters. I need to create a specific math parameter for this thing because I'm going to divide by five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this EQ error, Lambda AFR EQ error, I'm going to snag the formula out of this thing. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go down to a new user math situation and then paste that thing into here. Then I'm going to take this whole formula, put parentheses around it, and then I'm going to divide by five. Boom. Done with that thing. Save it. User math. We'll call it divided. Hopam. Uh, let's do this thing. User math. EQ uh, divided. We'll call it by five. Save. EQ divided. Yes, I already saved it because I already did this thing a hundred times. All right, so now we have the EQ divided table, but we haven't put the user math parameter in there yet. So we're going to go to graphs layout, select divided, change the math parameter. And I'm going to go down to user maths, user defined in the maths section. Hoppa, EQ divided. That's the one we want to put in there. High, low values are correct. Um, the axes are correct. Unit of measure is correct. So that's all good. So now what I want to do is I want to populate a table and then compare the EQ error and the EQ divided. So I'm going to go forward with the key. <clears throat> Start scanning. So we did that real quick. We populated a table, right? So we got 2,000 RPM at 40 kPa. This thing is at 10%. It's showing 10% rich because it's green, showing I need to subtract 10% out. So if I look at the EQ divided, which is this table divided by 5, we show a 2% right there. So that's a little bit more re realistic because if I went into the... Uh, VE table and I went to 2000 at 40 kPa and I pulled 10% out of this table, I'd be pulling it down to 47, which would be almost uh, like a 20-25% change in fueling. And I don't want to change it that much, I just want to change the whole fueling system 2%. I don't want to pull 10% out of this. So that's why this is important. And that's how you would do it. <laughs>